Yo, yo, what's up, my brother? How you doing? Uh, Shalom. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, my dear brother. I can hear you. I can hear you well, my dear brother. What's up, man? What's I your name? My name is Chris. I'm uh, from Virginia, United States. Nice, nice. I'm from LA, my dear brother. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, so what's LA going on? Is... Uh, what what topic did you want to touch on today, my dear brother? Well, I was gonna. Ask, can I get my picture up here? I'm happy to talk to you face to face. I'm not very slick with computers or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Uh, you just hit the guest, right? You hit guest. Uh, you hit the multi guest, and then you just turn on the camera. That's it. There's a middle thing where the camera is, and then you could just turn on the camera, and then we could uh, go ahead and chop it up. Boom! There it is. Beautiful. See me? I can see you. I can see you. Yes, sir. So, um. I'm uh, I'm Christian. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, my dear brother. I'm right. happy for you. I have a have a very good friend from Iraq, okay. who is Muslim. I've had okay. several very very close um, Muslim friends, and um, unlike a lot of other Christians of a certain persuasion, like I believe in more of a like, like I I don't see any way that God is going to condemn righteous men no matter no matter how they identify religiously you know yes yes um and this actually causes separation between myself and other christians more sure. so than myself sure. and the muslims i interact with sure does this, this make sense no no absolutely i know exactly what you're talking about my dear brother yeah so there was a saying i think that comes from but mostly Islam and maybe also the Jewish people say this as well. And it's like Allah has put these distinctions, these differences here to test us. Dude, is it okay if I share with you the verse of the Quran that talks about that? Please. Okay, Please. beautiful, beautiful. So it says in chapter 67, right, verse number one, uh, very clearly, right, I'll go ahead and recite it for you in Arabic and then I'll read it for you in English, okay? And then we'll continue to discuss about this. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Tabarak al-ladhi biyadihi al-mulk. Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن وعلا وهو العزيز الغفور. Right, that says right that in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Right, that blessed is the one. And whose hands rests all authority. And he is the one, right, who created life and death in order to test which one of us is best in deeds. And he is the Almighty, the All Forgiving. Yeah, so you're absolutely right, my dear brother. This life is simply a test for human beings if they want to choose the right path or if they want to choose the wrong path. It's completely up to them. It's completely up to them. There is no compulsion. There is no force when it comes to believing and worshiping your creator. It is completely up to you. Either you want to worship your creator or you want to worship the creation. Completely up to you. So so when we when we look at something from the East, though, like Hinduism, sure. right? Or Buddhism, sure. right? Sure. And we see that we see like, sincerity among those many millions of people in those cultures yes you know they're just it appears to me like buddhism is just using a different language like in buddhism there is no creator there is just like ignorance or virtue and mind mind itself and then desire corrupting Desire for illicit sex, gambling, inebriation, like the same things we see in Christianity and Islam. I just, I see a very much similarity among the systems. Interesting. Like, yeah, no, when it comes to Buddhism, 
I personally believe, right, that Buddha was a prophet of Almighty God because it says in the Quran that, right, uh, that Allah has sent many, many, many prophets, like over 100,000, uh, over 120,000 plus prophets throughout the world, right? All telling them to worship the Creator alone. But after Buddha died, they started to worship Buddha instead of worship, the, you know, and follow instead of following the message of Buddha. Because when it comes to uh, when it comes to Buddhism, right? The first, like they didn't create the scripture to five generations afterwards. There was no like the original teachings of Buddha no longer exist. If that makes sense. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, I might. I have to. You know, respectfully, maybe contest that. I don't. No, 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 no problem. No, yeah, yeah. It's it's an open conversation. No problem. Yeah, feel free to you know speak however you want to speak, my dear brother. Yeah. No, I don't. So, what? How do you feel about the age of the Earth? Yes, I mean, uh, from from my understanding, this Earth has been here for a very, very long time. Humans have only been on Earth for a certain amount of time. And before humans were on Earth, there was another creation on Earth prior to that. And before that creation, there was another creation prior to that. So this Earth is simply a testing ground for different creations that the Creator made and placed them on Earth as a testing ground to see, you know, either they're going to go to paradise or they're going to they're gonna go to the hellfire. No to in between. sum it up. No so, in-between? There is no in-between, my dear brother. There is no in-between, no. Are there levels? To each? Yes, 100%. There is Both. levels uh, to paradise, 100%. Uh, when it talks about the heavens, right, there is many, many levels. There's seven different heavens, right? One above the other, right? And the, 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 the distance between each heaven is 500 years of travel. 500 years of travel. So, what and then when what, it comes what, to... What, what kind yeah, of travel? Ahead. What kind of travel? Like the fastest, like uh, the fastest... Like light year, uh, you know, yeah. The fastest um, way that you could uh, even fathom traveling it's five hundred years of that travel. It's interesting. So yeah. you don't have so in Catholicism they have like a you know you're familiar with purgatory. Yes, purgatory. Yes. But you, in Islam, sure. it's, but you could elaborate for the chat so they understand as well what it is. So in Catholicism, which really is the biggest sect of christianity prior to protestantism the protestant reformation they have a different it's sort of like sunni and shiite with islam right mm -hmm. um the catholics have an ideology that you that for people that weren't very good and weren't very bad they will actually be given a chance after they die for a while to go through a progress told called purgatory which will be difficult but will help cleanse the soul so they won't there will be people in the middle that they weren't totally evil and they weren't they weren't totally for god but they will be given a chance after death they'll be given a process mm. no uh so in, in islam that doesn't exist you have like you have to understand that the, the creator is extremely loving extremely compassionate extremely forgiving but you have until your soul leaves your body to ask for forgiveness. Once your soul leaves your body, there's no coming back after that. It's over. What if, uh, how do you guys feel about if you've asked for forgiveness, right? Yeah. But someone, someone backslides and they go back to the alcohol or they cheat on their wife and then they die after that without having asked for forgiveness. Will uh, Allah judge them based on the last sin? So Allah only judges you based on your sincerity, based on your heart. So if you truly repented, right, with the sincerity of your heart, then Allah's forgiveness is always open to His creation. Always, always, no matter what, no matter what evil that you've done in your life, His His forgiveness is beyond, like His mercy is beyond His wrath. But let's say if you are doing it without the um, let's say you're you're doing it um, and you're trying to fool your creator. You can't fool your creator because he knows your thoughts before you think it. He's the one who created your brain. Better than better than we do. Yes, better than we do. So the the 
obviously you're familiar with the Trinity. Right? Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, Christianity is one of the first religions that I looked into. Um, I, I, I've been, Muslim, you know, I came to Islam about 10 years ago. 10 years ago was the first time I read the Quran. Where did you read it? Uh, I mean, I just grabbed the copy and I, I just read it. This is the Quran, the first Quran that I read. Sure. I just grabbed the copy, I read it. And then after that, you know, my life yeah, has been different. Ever since. This one. Okay, beautiful, man. Beautiful. Good for I'm you, my dear brother. Halfway. Halfway through. Beautiful. Beautiful, my dear brother. I watch, uh, do you ever see uh, Speaker's Corner? Yes. Speaker's Corner? Yes. It's really yes. good. Yes. I, I, I've been, like, very impressed by um, a lot of the way uh, Muslim guys will build their arguments. It's, it's very, I find it very impressive, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, And I've learned a lot from it, and... um. So, I mean, I've been around Christianity my whole life. I mean, I went to church today. I tried to pray every day. Beautiful, um, man. Beautiful. But, but I also believe, like, if we're going to have discussions, like, I should make my mind open to whatever makes, you know, you whatever see what makes I'm saying? Sense. Like, yes. If, yes. I, if I come to this conversation taking the position that I already know everything, I could You're never going to learn. You're never going to yeah. learn. And I've learned a lot. From, I've learned a lot from, from, from Muslim people. And um, so a question I would ask you maybe is like, within the Trinity, our, our personality of the Father, right? The fa not the Son, but the Father. Yes. What's, what is different about the Father and just Allah? So you see, like, in, obviously in the Bible, right, it, it mentions different things about, about the Father, right? Like, for instance, you know, if you look at the different stories of the Prophet, first of all, it says, obviously, that, the, that Almighty God created the earth in six days, seven days, he rested, right? Allah does not rest. I want to share with you a story of Moses and also a verse of the Quran, if that's okay with you, my dear brother, that talks about this. When you say, when you say a verse, a verse will be in a surah, is that right? Surah? Yes, yes, yes. Surah is the main chapter? Yes, yes. Is it yes, 100, 119? Yes. And so, like, if you were going to tell me where it was, you could say, how would you say the number? Yes, so it would be chapter 2, verse 255. Is it the cow? Yes. All right, and then so you can read that, and I'll see if I have the same thing. I beautiful, beautiful. Same. So yeah. first I'll recite in Arabic, and then I'll re and then I'll, I'll share with you in English. Okay. Okay. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum La ta'akhuduhu sinatahu wa la na'um Lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard Ma dha al-nadhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi-idhni Ya'alamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤضه هفظهما وهو العلي العظيم Hey man, I know you felt the energy right now, right? I know you felt it, bro. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So right now it's talking about the one true God, right? Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except Him, the ever-living, all-sustaining. Neither drowsiness nor sleep overtakes Him. And to Him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. Who could possibly intercede with Him without His permission? He fully knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them, but no one could grasp any of His knowledge. No one could grasp any of His knowledge except what he wills to reveal. And his seat encompasses the heavens and the earth, and the preservation of both does not tire him, for he is the most high, the greatest. Right? You know, Moses asked a very similar question that you asked, my dear brother, right? Moses, he asked, right, Angel Gabriel, 
that all, all angel we call him angel Jibrail, right? He said, Oh Jibrail, does Allah sleep? And Angel Jibrail, the way he responded, he said, Oh Musa, I want you to hold this vase, right? And then after I will respond to you. So he told Musa to hold the vase, and he was instructed to stand there all night holding the vase. So as Musa was holding the vase all night, he was standing all night. For one moment, he felt a little drowsy, and the vase slipped to his hand, and it hit the ground and shattered to pieces. And immediately, Angel Jibrail appeared and said that if Allah were to fall drowsy or to fall asleep, this entire world and this entire universe would crash and shatter to pieces the same way this vase shattered to pieces. So when it talks about Allah, the Father in the Bible, right? And then it talks about Allah in the Quran. It is, obviously, we're talking about the same person. But the way it's being described is completely different. In the story of Adam, right? When, you know, when Adam was in the heavens, he ate from the, the fruit. Obviously, it said that, oh, the Creator had to look for him. Like, he didn't know where Adam was. You know, these different things. In, in Islam, we don't say such things. We say he is the all-knowing, right? That he knows things before they even happen. Like, and that's what attracted me so much to Islam is the way that they view the Creator. That they, they kind of put a certain level of respect on the Creator's name that I've never seen any other religion do. If that makes sense, my dear brother. I, I, I hear that. I understand that. My other concern, though, would be... Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm hesitant with a, a, a form of fundamentalism related to any religion. Sure, sure, sure. Right? And so when we take an extreme view of holiness, like, you know, people drawing a cartoon of Muhammad peace yes. be upon him, and then losing yes. their life over that. Yes. But we're also calling Allah the most merciful. Yes. So that's a strange... No, 100, that's a great point. But as you know, we can't judge a religion by its followers. We judge the religion by its book, right? For instance, it's like me saying that, hey, should I judge Christianity based on the KKK or the Crusaders? No, that will not be just, that will not be right. You cannot judge people or judge the religion based on its followers. But one thing about the Muslims is Muslims are not cowardice, right? Obviously, there's many movies that were made about Jesus, peace be upon him, him being a homosexual, him being in these different shows and family guy, you know, all types of stuff, and no one does anything about it. One thing about Muslims is we are not cowards. We are not cowards. When something happens, we stand up immediately. And we will not tolerate any disrespect towards the prophets of Allah or mm. Allah Himself. Mm. That's just that's just the nature of the Muslim. Compa like withholding of retribution, though, is not always a form of cowardice. It's a it's no. A very... I actually very much agree with you. I very much yeah. agree with you that we should be merciful because we're taught to be that way. But obviously, it's the nature of the human being as well. Yeah. So you guys have, so you're looking at Genesis and you're saying this is talking about Allah, but the, it's doing it in a way that has been altered. So you recognize the text as about the creator. You're just saying that they've gotten a characterization of it. So then would you be someone who has like, Torah and you have also Christian scriptures and you recognize yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. look I have, I have multiple Bibles right here um, you know I have the you know the MacArthur study Bible a uh, new King, uh, new King James Version I also have the um, the Gideon's Holy Bible as well I, I even have the Book of Mormons but yeah yeah definitely you know I, I read all scriptures my dear brother but I'm saying those scriptures you believe they are about Allah, but they're just not correct totally. Yes. yes right. Yes. Right. So you, so you would take like Genesis because that's what you just did. I, I would basically read it with discernment. I believe there's definitely gems in there, absolute gems in there. 
but I do have to read it with extreme discernment. And it's not, but it's not just your discernment. It's like there is this a, a Muslim orthodoxy to the interpretation, right? Sure, because like the way you... that we view a law, like you know, obviously they call him the Father, right? But there's a verse in the Quran. Uh, you know, we could go ahead and uh, I'll show it to you. It's chapter nineteen, right? Um, when it talks about Mary, right? The chapter of Mary, uh, chapter nineteen, verse eighty-eight. And is your is your Quran? It has the Arabic, and then it has the English. Does it also have a dialogue explaining? Like, does it? Have yes. So actually, this is the this is a, the Quran I highly recommend. It's called the Clear Quran. It doesn't have the Thou art all that other stuff. It's like the New English. It's not you know. It's a mixture of Quran and Hadith, but it's all English. No Arabic in it. No Arabic in it. But does it also have an explanation? For the verses like yeah just... there's uh there's different uh quran's that do have like a study quran they d they did create a study quran that would have deeper deeper um explanation and whatnot my dear brother but obviously um you would have to you would have to uh purchase the study quran uh if you're looking for deeper deeper uh analysis on the verses the study quran would be absolutely perfect for you my dear brother yeah um but the verse i was talking about right is chapter 88 uh, so chapter 19, verse 88, right? Saying Allah has children, right? They say the most compassionate has offspring. You have certainly made an outrageous claim by which the heavens are about to burst, the earth to split apart, and the mountains to crumble to pieces in protest of attributing children to the most compassionate. It does not befit the majesty of the most compassionate to have children, right? So... It basically is like, so the way that we view it and the way that the Christians view it is different, but obviously they're talking about the same creator. Yeah, and I mean, you're still, even in this, you're still having Mary be a virgin. Yes, She's 100%. Yes. So who, so, so, I mean, a child needs a mother and, every child has a mother and father. Sure. So who is Jesus's father? Well, my dear brother, when it comes to Jesus, right? Jesus, the same example of Jesus is similar to the example of Adam. Adam was created without a mother and without a father, which is even more miraculous than Jesus, peace be upon him, right? But that's the miracle birth of Jesus, my dear brother, that he does not have a father, right? That the angel Gabriel came and simply touched, right? Touched the, the womb of Mary, right? And by the order of the Almighty Creator, and the Creator just said, Kun fayakun, be, and it is. Immediately, Mary got pregnant. Immediately, she gave birth. There wasn't a nine-month process or anything like that. Immediately, she, she, she got pregnant. Immediately, she gave birth. Do you believe he was without sin? 100%, of course. But the He's thing is, sin. we believe, we believe that, you see, and also the way that, as Muslims, how we view the Prophets, compared to how Christians view the prophets, is completely different as well. Obviously, if you look at the book of Genesis, it talks about Lot, his daughters. It talks about David, right? And obviously, you know, what happened with, you know, uh, you know him having uh, intimacy with another man's wife, sending him off to war, his intimacy with Solomon's wives as well, and these different things. In the Quran, none of that exists. It says the prophet... It doesn't. Yeah. In, in the Quran, it says that these are the best examples for mankind, right? But So, you, so do, did David sin no, at all? We believe that the prophets make mistakes, but they do not intentionally sin. A sin is basically you intentionally did it. Like even Adam, when he ate from the, when he, when he ate from the forbidden fruit, he didn't intentionally eat from the tree. He was instructed in the beginning, right? To not eat from the tree. Then many, many, many years later, he was deceived by Lucifer. We know him as Iblis, right? Saying that if you eat from this uh, from this forbidden fruit, you will be like the angels and you will be in paradise forever. And obviously with the influence of Eve and the influence of Lucifer, Adam ate from the tree first. Obviously in the biblical narration, it says Eve ate from the tree first. And that's why all women are punished with childbirth 
And obviously, you know, we all, uh, you know, we, we, uh, you know, the original sin, the concept of the original sin. Obviously, in Islam, we don't believe in the original sin. Allah immediately forgave Adam and then placed him on earth. Right? Allah forgave him. We don't have the original sin in Islam. Right? And that's why for us, that's why Friday is such a special day. Because we believe, right, on a Friday, the earth was created. On the Friday, the earth will be destroyed. On a Friday, the first human was created. And also on the Friday was the first act of forgiveness was also accepted by a human being, which was Adam. So, so, I, so I have um, a little bit better understanding of where it would divert from Christian theology. Sure. Where, where do you feel like it most diverts from Jewish theology? Interesting, interesting. So, you know, for me, uh, like for me looking into Judaism, um, it was kind of like uh, I didn't get too deep into it because immediately, obviously, from, from my understanding, right, the, the Orthodox Jews will not accept me as a Jew unless my mother was a Jew. So more Jewish is more of a culture than it is a religion. You know, obviously they have their customs and whatnot. But in order to be accepted and like or convert to a Jew, it's very difficult. It's not it's not an easy process, right? Obviously, there's different types of Jews. There's liberal Jews. There's Orthodox Jews. There's non-liberal Jews. You know, there's obviously different types of Jews. But obviously, we're talking about the Orthodox Jews. They will not accept you as a Jew unless your mother is a Jew. So I immediately disqualified that as a religion for mankind because obviously they believe that they're the chosen people. They reject Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of Mary, um, and different things. So for me, I, I didn't need to look so deep into it to know that it wasn't necessarily the the true teachings of the Creator. Because obviously, the Creator wouldn't only pick you know such a small number of people to be the chosen ones. And if you're not born into it, you're immediately going, you're not chosen, you're going to be in the hellfire. So I don't believe the creator is an unmerciful creator like that, if that makes sense. They, yeah, but I wouldn't, I don't think the Jews believe he's unmerciful either. I mean, they, no, I understand, they, but the, the, the whole idea of them being the chosen people and then also you're being born into, because obviously me and you never chose our mothers and our fathers, Right. So we but they, but, that. but they, but they, I think they believe that more as they were chosen for a role. Sure, sure. You know and as I mean? Muslims, we do believe they are the chosen people, right? Or they were the chosen, chosen people. for a role, for 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 their for their part of God's plan. Well, you know, so yes, yes, yeah. So so, so a, like, I'll go ahead and explain that, and then you could go ahead uh, and, and and share and share as well. Uh, so if you read the story of the cow. It talks about, right, it talks about this very exact subject that we're talking about, right? It talks about the Israelites, right? And basically how they were known, like uh, most of the prophets came from Banu Israel. We don't call them Jews. We call them the children of Israel, right? Most of the prophets came from the children of Israel, right? But the didn't children all, of Israel... Didn't, didn't almost all? Like the only one would be Muhammad would be the last one, right? Like yes, yeah, all, all, almost, all almost all, but obviously uh, it started with Abraham. So Nuh, um, you know, uh, you know, Adam, uh, Enoch, you know, there was other prophets as well. Also in the Quran, it mentioned there's over, there's about 124,000 plus prophets. So these are only the ones that we oh. know about. You know, you know, there's so much we don't know. Allah only reveals to us whatever he wills to reveal to us. But obviously, there's so much that we are unaware of completely, you know? So in the Quran, it's very clear. It says there's over 124,000 prophets, right? That, that's what it says in the Quran. About 124,000 prophets, right? So, um... That's a lot. It's, yeah, it is, it's very much a lot. You know, and that's why I believe Buddha was one of those prophets. And after he died, the message got misconstrued, you know? Because that's usually what happens. Every time the prophet dies, now it's upon the people to basically, uh, you know, hold down that original message of that prophet. And usually, almost every single time, the people, they get tempted and they create a religion of, them, a religion of their own instead of, you know, um, following what the prophet has instructed them to do. Is, is their system sufficient for paradise, though? Will there be um, Buddhists in paradise? So, uh, my dear brother, so, you know, from what I learned, my dear brother, it's very, very easy 
to go into paradise. It's actually very, very difficult to go to the hellfire. And the way that you enter into, uh, the way that you go to paradise is you must be loyal to your creator at all costs, right? As soon as you show disloyalty to your, to your creator, then the hellfire is created for those people who show disloyalty to the creator. What I mean by that is very simple, that if you create equals with your creator or you worship other than your creator, then those people will be severely punished. But so a situation like where Buddhists are very good people in many regards, but they have made this mistake, right? Where they are like partnering with Allah. Is this going to be... So, this, And that's a big question for me. It's almost like this... Um, there's a way we can look at this, you know, this great sin of idolatry sure. in Islam, right? Sure. But at a certain point, and this is something I try to explain to Christians as well, because they do a very similar thing, but they just do it with Jesus, whereas Muslims do it with Allah. It's like, is Allah that concerned about his praise? Like, isn't Allah itself like humble enough to not that not be that like isn't the actions of a man more important than you know like it almost comes off as like the creator needing this egoic the creator no, no. is not egoic uh, right one hundred percent okay no I, I definitely understand what you're saying so one thing is Allah does not need his creation right. That's one thing that is very important for us to know, that he existed before us and he will exist after us as well, right? He is in no need of his creation. When we worship Allah, all it does is benefit us, right? And you know, I didn't understand what you were, like, you know, this idea that you're talking about. I had the same perspective as well until I went to Mecca, right? When I went to Mecca and I saw, I don't know if have you heard of the holy city of Mecca, correct? Yes. Yeah. And you see how many people are gathered there, like millions, millions and millions of people are gathered there, right? Um, and when I went there, right, and I witnessed these masses of people coming there to worship Allah, right, and, and to do the pilgrimage, I was absolutely astonished because I realized that, man, like all of the stuff that I'm doing, like me worshiping Allah, like let's say if I decide, hey, you know, I'm going to stop praying. Guess what? There's, there's, gonna, there's so many dedicated followers all over the world that are worshiping like like when I was when I was uh, like around the Kaaba, I saw so many people crying their eyes out, worshiping, prostrating, so like millions of people. So for me, it really hit me like wow, you know, Allah doesn't need my worship because regardless, there's gonna be someone somewhere out there, His creation worshiping Him, right? But you need is, it. You huh? need it. I am the one it. who needs it. Yeah. yeah. So once once that hit me, I, I had to learn. Like the thing about me. You know, obviously they say a smart man learns from his own mistakes. A wise man learns from other mistakes. But this is something I didn't understand completely till I went there and I looked around and I witnessed that. Like it finally clicked in my head that Allah does not need me, but I need Allah, right? So that's, you know, but as, as far as, you know, what you mentioned about the Buddhists and this is that, right? You have to understand Allah does not punish anyone in their ignorance, Right? Allah does not punish anyone if they're in their ignorance. Someone who's born into a Buddhist family, for instance, my forefathers were Hindu. They worship 33 million gods. You know, obviously... Your your, your forefathers were Hindu? My forefathers were Hindu. They worship 33 million gods. Are you, are you Indian? No, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of uh, from uh, from that um, uh, South Asian uh, background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pakistan? The Pakistan and, and also North Africa as well. It's a mixture of both. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, my forefathers were, were Hindu, right? Where they worship 33 million gods, you know, um, you know, and there's a verse of the Quran that actually talks about uh, talks about this, right? In chapter 36, right? Um, chapter 36, the, the first couple of verses of chapter 36, it, it talks about this, right? I'll go ahead and recite it in Arabic, and then I'll read it for you in English. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم 
إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون right? In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Yasin, by the Quran, rich in wisdom. You, O Prophet, are truly one of the messengers upon the straight path. That this is the revelation from the Almighty, the most merciful. So you may warn a people whose forefathers were not warned and are so heedless. Right? So that's basically, um, you know, you know, so basically, you know, this book came to warn people whose forefathers were not warned of the truth. So the reality is Allah does not punish anyone in their ignorance. Allah only punishes those, right, who basically were given the truth, right, were instructed of what the truth is, and then they decided to go against the truth. For example, let, let's say at the time of Moses, if we were alive at the time of Moses, we witnessed right the earth the, the ocean split we witnessed that right and we decide you know what we're still gonna go against moses and we're gonna side with the pharaoh instead you get what i'm trying to say or let's yeah say out of, a, it, they did it it was out of it, they were tested in the wilderness they yes. were tested they saw miracles of god but yet they were also put through trial we have them they were killed a lot of people were killed for their disobedience true do you have that's is that your version? Uh yes. Um I have to I have to look back into it, but all of that is in the second chapter of the Quran. It talks about all of that. Um, you know, uh the story of Musa and what happened uh, you know, to to obviously the Israelites and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't recall at, at the moment. I can't recall at the a moment, my dear brother. Yeah. But so with Buddhists, you would let them practice freely though. One hundred percent. Everyone has yeah. a free will. To choose whatever they want to follow. Like, for instance, right? Um, also, like, at the very end of the Quran, right? There is a chapter called um, 109, right? Um, if you go to chapter 109, it's a very, very small, right? Um, and basically, the story of that, right, was um, these pagans, they offered uh, to worship Allah alone for one year, provided that the Prophet Muhammad were to worship their multiple gods for one year as well. And then this chapter was revealed, right? So I'll go ahead and recite it for you. And then uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you the translation, right? A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun La a'abudu ma ta'abudun Wala antum abidun ma a'abud Wala ana abidun ma abadtum Wala antum abidun ma a'abud Lakum dinukum waliya deen Right? In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, right? It says, O oh, you disbelievers, I do not worship what you worship, nor will you worship what I worship. I will never worship what you worship, nor will you ever worship what I worship. You have your way, I have my way. So it's very simple that if you choose to disbelieve, you can choose that path completely up to you, right? And that I will choose to believe, and that will be my choice. So everyone has the free will to make whatever decision they want, my dear brother. I think he'll look at the, the heart and the intention behind all of it. He's going 100%. To assess, Allah looks you know. at the hearts of mankind. Yes. He looks at the hearts of mankind. What's your name? Uh, my name is Abdul Wahab. Abdul Wahab? Uh, Abdul Wahab. Wahab. W-A-H-A-B. Wahab. Yes, sir. Wahab. Yes. I'm Chris. Oh, beautiful. I, I didn't even get to ask you that. That's usually yeah. how I start, you know? But yeah, beautiful, my dear brother Chris. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much for your time today, man. I, I followed you. Um, hopefully, oh, was that it? That, that's all the questions that you had. Oh, I mean, I, I it's it's twelve twenty on the East Coast. So I'm gonna. You've given me a lot to process. 
But um, sure. I hope I get to interact with you again in the future, and uh, I'll I'll yeah. stay up with you, man. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, man. Well, yeah. I appreciate you, man. I'm glad that you came in. I appreciate you having an open heart and an open mind. Um, and yeah, bro, you're always welcome here anytime, my dear brother. Appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. Masalam. Yes, masalam, brother. Stay blessed. Takadu tamayyazu min al Kullama ulqiya fiha fawjun Sa'alahum khazanatuha Sa'alahum khazanatuha Alam ya'tikum nadhir Qalu bala qad ja'ana فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في ضلال كبير وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نعكل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير فاعترفوا بذنبهم فسهقا لأصحاب السعير